Uh, I was um, at a dinner uh, recently in New York and found myself sitting next to Henry Kissinger and I asked him how he thought President Obama is doing. And Kissinger replied, well, he reminds me of somebody who started uh, six grandmaster chess games that he's playing simultaneously, uh, but I haven't actually seen him finish a game yet. And I wanted to ask him you know, what those six games were. Unfortunately, I didn't have time. But as I thought about it before he was whisked off to make a speech, but uh, as, I, as I thought about it, I think those six games are probably Afghanistan, Pakistan, Israel, Palestine, uh, the reset button with Russia, Iran, China, and India. Um, you heard that right. Uh, Japan does not uh, appear on that list. Uh, history does move on. And I think the US-Japanese relationship, uh, once obviously in the Premier League, uh, is no longer as important. We don't see much of Japan on page one of the New York Times. Um, obviously, the end of the Cold War, even with its remnants in Asia, and 9-11, and uh, the relative decline of the Japanese economy have all played a role in that. Still, I think this relationship uh, between the world's two largest economies is clearly a highly significant and very important one still. And it's in flux. Uh, there are tensions. Uh, you've got two new administrations. You've got two changes you can believe in. And they're trying to find an accommodation with each other. I should say here right away that I think um, the change uh, to a DPJ government from the LDP after more than five decades is a very positive development. Uh, democracies need alternation to renew themselves. Uh, and the interweaving of the state and the party that we've seen here with the LDP uh, reminding us a little, I think, of the former PRI, PRI in Mexico, or the CDU in Italy, uh, is not healthy. Uh, you get uh, a kind of division of the spoils politics, and um, it is not uh, a good thing. So I think the fact that Japan, 20 years up the end of the Cold War, uh, was ready for a shakeup, ready to move beyond uh, this cronyism, this entrenched bureaucracy. Although I must say that over the last three days, I found myself feeling sorry for Japanese bureaucrats. <laughs> Everybody seems to have it in for them. There seems to be some kind of Japanese version of the Great Terror uh, going on in, in their regard. But Japan was ready for this um, shake-up, um, the declining regional influence, the China complex, and this rather passive relationship uh, with the United States, this, this lack of self-confidence, this self-marginalization. So I welcome uh, this change. Uh, nevertheless, I do see uneasy days ahead uh, for the U.S.-Japan relationship. Why? Um, I think the United States expected a degree of subservience from a country whose constitution, after all, it wrote. Uh, and I think the new generation of Japanese is going to question that. And perhaps the very election of Prime Minister Hatoyama is a sign of Japan breaking loose from old molds, from taboos, from a kind of fear, from a, a lack of readiness to take any risks. Um, and obviously, uh, in this context, the Putenma debate is uh, emblematic. The United States thought the debate was closed. It's not. Um, and it seems that Prime Minister Hatoyama is determined to honor his campaign pledge and find a way to move some of the helicopters and Marines out of Okinawa. I hear a lot of talk about how he's being indecisive. Well, we should recall that President Obama took 92 days, I think it was, uh, to make his decision on Afghanistan. So I think we should, I'm ready at least to accord the Prime Minister uh, a little time. Um, I think the fact that of late uh, the Prime Minister has been talking up the importance of the alliance, despite the difficulties over from Tenma, uh, is important. The United States remains a critical offsetting power in Asia. That role is much more peripheral in Europe now, even if the poles, for example, are attached to it. But here in Asia, I do think it remains very important, given the rapid rise of China, its expanding military budget, the tensions on the border between South Korea and nuclear armed North Korea, um, unresolved territorial disputes over various islands. In this rather volatile context, uh, the Japan-US alliance is a form of insurance. 
it dis discourages other powers from tempting faith, and it assures smaller nations that China is not the only game in town. In a way, the situation here reminds me a little bit of, of Germany 10 years ago. Uh, there was a desire in Germany in the late 90s to be a normal country, to come out from US tutelage, to have a more equal relationship with the United States. And of course, that led to some tensions, for example, over the Iraq war, when there was a real confrontation between Germany and the United States. But it didn't end the alliance between Germany and the United States. And I think automatic acquiescence uh, can, can be dangerous. So there will be differences, new differences, between Japan and the United States. But the alliance, I think, uh, will survive uh, and, move, and move forward. Of course, a more equal relationship will mean more responsibilities for Japan uh, and perhaps a an increase in defense spending. And I don't know if Japan is ready for that. I'll conclude very quickly with two uh, points. Uh, the first is on Japanese confidence. Um, you know, it's been quite depressing here. Craig and I were talking about this earlier. Uh, you know, the Japanese funk, this pessimism, seems to me to be a little bit overdone. Um, these have been very hard times for the middle class in Japan. There's been the rise of China. Uh, but, you know, this is still a very rich, very creative country that certainly, if, you, if I look at my son, the things Japan invents have a hold on his imagination. So um, I think perhaps with a change of government, the new prime minister can rebrand and re-energize uh, Japan to some degree uh, if it's ready for that. Um, I would also just like to say that um, I do think it's important that this alternation that we've seen the beginning of uh, persists. Um, one minister here that we saw when asked about the chances of uh, a return of the former governing party, the LDP, uh, said that was as remote as the Iraqis wanting Saddam Hussein back. <laughs> and we heard another minister talking about 2020 with a kind of insur assurance uh, that the DPJ would still be in power then. They're clearly looking uh, long term. And it's unclear, I think, at this point, whether the LDP is a kind of PRI or, C or CDU, Italian and Christian Democratic Party, bound for extinction, <laughs> or just facing a spell in the wilderness. I think the DPJ will be around for a while, but I do think it's important that there be a real opposition party, because any new Japanese vitality and normality, and a more assertive and less complex and more confident Japan, needs a democracy where real alternatives exist. And such a Japan, I think, would be good for Asia and good for the world. Thank you.